If I took all the items that I fell in love with on Kirkland's website for fall this year and totaled it up, my bank account would not be happy. So instead, we're going to take those as inspiration, we're going to dupe them, and I'm gonna bring you along to show you how you can get that high-end Kirkland's look on a much smaller budget. This is Whiskey and Wit, my name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor, so if you love that too, be sure to hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. Also, a huge thank you to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk more about them in a little bit, but first, let's get into the dupes. My first inspo piece was this wheat arrangement. I've been loving wheat to add texture to my vignettes, but that was a little too expensive. So I grabbed one of these cylindrical vases from the thrift store. It ended up being $2 and I gave it a quick spray with some matte spray paint. I did two coats of that white, let it completely dry, and then I got these wheat stems that are extra long on Amazon. I just wrapped the bottom with the packaging it came in, but you could use a plastic bag or some wrapping paper, and it fills out the vase perfectly. This is a great dupe for that $50 product, and it really adds height and texture to vignettes. Here, I'm showing it with a printable. There are a ton of different options. So $50 versus the 12 bucks because the wheat was 10 bucks on Amazon, 75% off. I've been getting a lot of questions on when are my printables coming and now is the time. There are so many beautiful pieces of artwork on Kirkland's website, but they can add up really quickly. So I have got a full printables pack for you for fall 2022 linked over on my blog. You can head down to the description to head over to the link and download it on the blog post. It's quick and easy to do and then you can print these out however you would like and decorate your home with these. I've got 8x10s, 5x7s, and four by six sizing over there so you can pick what works for you pop it into a frame you already have and you're good to go another use for the printables is to create a sign it's great in lieu of a cricket as well so this hello pumpkin sign is duped with this 90 percent off hobby lobby sign you could also use a dollar tree sign or really anywhere that is getting rid of their summer signs you can do this i liked the wood outside so i just covered the center with some white paint and then i printed out this free printable at five and a half inches square because that was the size of my particular sign you can measure and then cut it out yourself once it was cut out to my size, I used some double-sided tape to stick it to the sign. Just make sure you have it on all of your corners. And this guy was ready to go. I love the watercolor motif and I really like how this adds a little bit of color to my neutral display. The Kirkland's one retails for 10 bucks. I was able to make mine for a couple bucks. Great deal. And you could switch it out for each season. I love the look of the kind of whimsical fairy tale realistic pumpkins and I've been wanting to make concrete pumpkins for quite some time so I thought this was a great time to do so. I was able to get a bag of concrete for under five bucks and I only ended up using about half of it so that was only $2.50. I mixed it up in a bucket per the instructions that were on the container and the consistency is kind of like a chunky pancake batter slash brownie mix. Now to turn your concrete into pumpkins, you're going to need either pantyhose or some trouser socks. I just grabbed these from Dollar Tree. I liked that they were individual socks versus having to cut up pantyhose more than I needed to. I took them, cut out the top strap and just put it over a solo cup to make it easy to scoop it in. I used my old spoon to put it in there, tied off the top and then to create the little ridges, I just used some rubber bands. You can use whatever you have to tie it up, twine, you could use yarn. You just wanna make sure that you have something tight enough that's gonna give you those ridges as it dries. I also was working on top of some cardboard to make sure that I didn't get that concrete water everywhere. And you can also get creative with this by pushing and pulling and scrunching things up to get different sizes of pumpkins or flattening them. You can really get creative. I made a ton of these with about half a bag of that mix and I let them dry for about 36 hours. Then I just pulled up the top knot, started cutting my little rubber bands and then peeled back the trouser sock. You have to use a little bit of oomph to get it off and it's going to be a little dusty, but then I let them dry another couple hours once it was out of there just to make sure everything was dry. Then you can get creative with colors and textures. I painted some white and orange with some chalk paint. I also spray painted a couple of them in this oregano green. 
really however you want to do it it would also be fun if you've got grandkids they could decorate them as jack-o-lanterns and things and they would be really cute for the garden now for stems, I really like the look of this one that I recently found at Dollar Tree. So I had some old pumpkins just laying around I wasn't using. And so to repurpose them, I took the stem off that, cut it down, and then used a mixture of hot glue and super glue gel, both from Dollar Tree, to hook them to the top. I plan to use some of these outside and so with those I sprayed them with a clear sealant just to make sure that the paint wouldn't run and these look really great on our front porch. I also used some of them in a dough bowl setup. I just added some greenery from my stash and then added a variety of different sizes and things to the center of the table. Super easy. These things are solid so they're not going anywhere and I really love the texture. It's nice to switch it up and I was able to make literally so many of them for such a little price. It's not an apples to apples comparison or I guess in this case pumpkins to pumpkins but I do love these and they were inspired by the Kirkland's piece. The past few weeks have been crazy and stressful moving into a new house and as we start to get settled I have been longing so badly to get some healthy habits back into my routine because while I was stressed that all went out the window. So I was so excited when Care Of reached out. Care Of is a monthly subscription service that ships high quality and personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders right to your door. These daily packs are personalized just for me thanks to a quick and in-depth online survey that I took on Care Of's website. It asked me about my health and lifestyle goals. Based on my results, Care Of suggested vitamin C for immune health, fish oil for heart health, a probiotic for gut and immune health, and then also a prenatal because I shared that we want to expand our family. And I have the box right by my coffee maker as a daily visual reminder to take them. This has helped me keep a streak going so that I remember to take my vitamins every day and I also love the cute little sayings that they have on the packs. They've got fun quotes and challenges and I just love fun little details like that. For 50% off your first care of order be sure to go to takecareof.com and use my code WIT50. All that info will also be down in the description for you and now let's get back into the dupes. I don't know about you, but I feel like Kirkland's wreaths are always grossly overpriced, but I really love the look. I love the exposed grapevine wreath on this one, and I also liked the muted fall colors of this one. So I decided to do a mashup, and I grabbed a grapevine wreath from Hobby Lobby. This one's probably about 14 inches. It was $5.99, and then I went to their fall section and grabbed a variety of picks. I like to get ones like these that have a lot of different elements. It helps to make it fuller. Now I ended up getting about $25 worth of florals and you could really do this however you want. You could do Dollar Tree florals, Walmart florals. I just really liked the look of these. So I did a quick dry fit and then I grabbed some jute twine to hook together my little wheat slash pompous grass pieces here. I ended up doing two of the white and one orange and the other side had two orange and one white. I tied them together so they wouldn't fall apart on me and then I took the ends and just pushed it right into the grapevine wreath. It's nice because it will stay in there and you don't have to worry about gluing anything so you could switch it out if you want. After those two were in I repeated the same process with my two picks with the orange pumpkin and then my one with the white pumpkin. I swear I bought four of them and I got home and I only had three so I kind of like the asymmetrical look anyway. Then I put that to the side and I needed to create a bow so this is just some neutral buffalo check ribbon also came from Hobby Lobby. I'm cutting a variety of lengths in this wired ribbon and gluing the centers together as loops. Then I'm going from the largest to the smallest, stacking them up and then tying the center really tight with some jute twine. After that's tied up I added another piece, tied it on with the jute twine on the back to create this fun little tail. Give it a quick fluff after you tie it on to the wreath with the jute twine and this guy is good to go. And then once I hung it up it was a little top heavy so I just took a little bit more jute twine and tied it on so those pieces wouldn't fall forward. I absolutely love this. This is the first time in a long time that I have had clearance between my front door and my storm door so I can actually hang a wreath there. I am so excited. I love the colors and it pops off our red door. The last time I did a porch sign, you guys loved it, and so I couldn't decide between this Halloween and fall one, so I decided to make a double-sided one. I was at Home Depot, but you can get your lumber anywhere, and I decided to go with this 1x10 that is 6 feet long. It's a common board, and it was under $10. 
I started by staining it with early American stain because that was the closest color to the inspiration, but you could paint or stain whatever color that you want. Also a friendly reminder to stir your stain because it is a little bit more red here than it should have been because I didn't stir it from the move, so that's my bad. I did the sides, but I didn't end up doing the back, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it once it dries. Once I let it dry, I flipped it over and painted the back with black chalk paint. Now you could do stained on both sides with what we're about to do, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of contrast for Halloween. For the autumn sign, we're going to go the Cricut route, and I actually have a Cricut Design Space project for you. So you can go down to the link, click it down in the description, and you can just click make it. It will cut it out to size for you, which is awesome. So you can make along with me and not have to worry about uploading or sizing. So be sure to check that out. I cut it all out on black matte permanent vinyl, which I will link down below for you. And I've got Hello Autumn as well as a variety of little leaves. I spaced everything out and then added it with my Expressions Vinyl paper transfer tape. I started with my A at the top and then did the N at the bottom and filled in the center. It just helped me visualize the spacing better. Then I went through with my little leaves and added them from the top throughout the bottom. It allowed me to kind of make it look like they were falling from the sky, which is the whole goal here. That's what the inspo piece looked like. I did a variety of different angles and I also fit them in between the letters and the hello at the top. And I also took one of my maple leaves and cut them directly in half so then that way I got a little bit more bang for that book. Now that that side was done, I printed out these hay, a bee, and one ghost because I was going to do two ghosts for boo. And here's a quick way that you can transfer it without a Cricut. Go ahead and scribble on the back where your text is with a pencil. That's going to create a faux graphite effect. You could also use graphite paper or tracing paper if you would rather, but here it's really easy. Once the back was colored, I took some painter's tape and stuck the paper where I wanted it on my sign, and then I traced around the outside to give myself an outline so that I could paint it. You will have just a faint outline, but it will be just enough for you to start painting it. I repeated it with the B and the two ghosts, and then I took a white paint marker and outlined all of the different elements, so then that way I could see what I was doing better when I went to paint it with the acrylic paint. I like to use acrylic paint and a detailed brush when I'm doing this. The acrylic paint just glides a lot better than a chalk paint and you're less likely to really have an issue of things smudging everywhere. Then I thought I was done, but I decided that the back looked a little blah, so I used some one inch painter's tape to mark off some stripes. I did one at the top with just a little bit of spacing and I used pumpkin Waverly chalk paint to give it some orange pop of color. I did three coats of the orange on the top and then I also did a similar but a little bit different line motif at the bottom just to add a little bit of visual appeal and a little bit of color pop to a sign that I thought just needed it. After I applied my third coat right away I peeled off the painter's tape so there was no way it was going to seal to my sign and potentially peel off. And then the last step was to make sure this sign was fully protected and coated. I'm using this triple thick polyurethane as well as a bristle brush instead of a foam brush. Foam brushes tend to add bubbles and it just doesn't look as good. But then let it dry overnight. Make sure you seal the entire thing. I did two coats and it is ready to go. It's going to be protected from the sun, from the snow, from the rain. And I do say snow because it snowed on Halloween here before. Illinois is crazy. But all that vinyl is going to be nice and protected and I absolutely love how this looks. The double-sided sign saves you not only time and money, but it's also going to save you on your storage space. So this is a win all around, a huge savings on these signs from the inspiration and I love that I can make it my own. And once I got done with that porch sign, I decided I wanted some Halloween pillows as well. So I saw these two as inspiration, thought they were super cute and thought I could make that myself. So I designed a really pretty kind of pattern thing in Canva that I was going to give to you guys and then I realized it's hard to cut it out if it's not sectioned off. So I've done all the work here. This is going to be another Make It Now project over on my Design Space profile, both the ghosts and the pumpkins. It will be sectioned off so you can cut it on a regular mat. You just go to my page, which is linked down below. Go ahead and click the project that you want and then you can either customize it to resize it if you don't have an 18 by 18 pillow or you can just go ahead and make it on mat without mat 
and you are good to go. So I'm really excited about this new thing Cricut has and I can share a lot of my work with you guys because I'm doing it for the videos anyway. Now when you're cutting with heat transfer vinyl, make sure your mirror setting is turned on and that you are putting shiny side down. I like to weed this, it's a lot more satisfying than other vinyl because you can peel it kind of more like a band-aid than being too ginger with it. And then I decided to use this four pack of black pillow covers. These are 18 by 18 inches and I got them on Amazon. The pack was like 13 bucks for four of them. I had to line up all of my pieces just because I cut them in chunks, but once everything was ready to go, I was so excited to break out my new heat press. HTV Rant sent this to me and I was so ready to check it out. I had a different heat press, but I was not a huge fan of it and this thing is awesome. It slides in and out. You can put your items onto that little press pad there and then when you're ready to press it, you just set your time and your temperature super easily as I'm doing here and then it's going to do all of the work for you. I popped off my press pillow and put it inside of the pillow cover just so then that way I wasn't pressing directly onto the zipper because I didn't want to melt it. I did a pre-press to get any of those weird wrinkles out and then I just started to go to work. The awesome thing is here, it will press for your time. When it's done, it will release the arm and then all you do is pull it out Voila! Done. I am super excited about this, especially because it is similar functionality to other things on the market. However, the price is a lot cheaper. They're currently in a Kickstarter campaign, so they sent it to me early to check it out, but I will link more information down below so you can keep an eye on that if you're in the market for a heat press. It made it easy to continue all the way around the outside. I did it chunk by chunk and I ended up putting a Dollar Tree tea towel over any of the HTV vinyl that I had already pressed and pulled the carrier sheet off of just to protect it. Originally I was going to do this in orange, but with the move I could not find any of my orange iron on, so I decided to go with gold glitter and I just love the glam take on Halloween. I repeated the exact same step with my ghost with my press. It worked super well with the non-glitter vinyl as well. And when I was done, I was just able to turn the power off and it cooled down for me. How cute are these? I love them so much. And I really love the idea of pillow covers instead of making so many pillows each season. It's really gonna help me with storage. I just took some old pillows that I'm not using anymore for fall, stuck them inside of here. It's really affordable and it's space saving win-win. Now I share this every year, but I absolutely love taking Kirkland signs and finding a super cheap alternative at Hobby Lobby and making it my own. So their spring shop was 90% off when I went last week. So this sign ended up being $3. You could do a variety of different sizes. I decided to do the big one, but this one would be more comparable to the size that they had on the website. I took some painter's tape and I taped off the outside of my sign before I started painting just so I could keep that really pretty frame intact. And then I used this folk art chalk paint in antique green and I really liked it because it was kind of a mixture of the green and the inspo but then it also kind of looks like a chalkboard so I really liked the color a little bit different than your traditional orange or dark wood. I gave it three coats to make sure I covered all of those words. And then this is a free cut file over on my blog. I cut it to size for my particular sign. I just measured the width of the sign and then subtracted two inches to give me a one inch space on either side. So you're gonna do that if your sign's 12 inches across, I would recommend cutting it at 10 inches across. And then I used my paper transfer tape to apply it right onto my sign. The paper transfer tape is low tack, so it's not gonna rip off all of that paint that you just worked so hard to apply and that is it it is ready to go this thing is a great size it gives great scale to the tables next to the fireplace and i just styled it with some candlesticks with some dollar tree and michael's pumpkins on it really quick and easy vignette that looks super put together I knew when I saw this sign that it had to be made for my Hocus Pocus setup for this year. So I decided to use this future hunting buddy sign. I got this for under two bucks at Hobby Lobby. And so I painted the front with some black chalk paint. I designed another file that was similar to it, Hocus Pocus Apothecary. Use that paper transfer tape, apply it to the sign and you are good to go. 
You can find these files over on my website. They are PNG cut files, but you can upload those to Cricut and cut them out and apply them to your sign. And you can use my files that I provide for free. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, here is another sign you can dupe easily. This one, but I love fall most of all. I decided to make a smaller version of it with this under $2 clearance sign. And again, so many stores right now are getting rid of summer stuff, getting ready for fall and Christmas. So check the clearance. It doesn't matter what the sign says. You can paint over it like I did here. And then I just used some typewriter style stamps that I got years ago from Michaels, but they still sell them. I will link them down below just a black ink pad and I'm using some painter's tape to help me do a straight line across. I used a small paintbrush to touch up any of the little overhangs or spills and I love how simple this is. It goes really well with a pumpkin and the wheat. It's a nice little neutral setup. You can add colors with a variety of other things and it is a quick and easy sign that you could put whatever saying you want on it. That's gonna do it for this round of Kirkland's Dupes. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite. And while you're down there, check out more info on Care Of. You can head to takecareof.com and use my code WIT50 to get 50% off your first Care Of order. A huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video and supporting Whiskey and Wit. Thanks to you for watching and hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.